Hello. In this video, we're going to look at three special topics in Java. They are all related and will be mixed up together. One thing we'll be doing towards the end is creating jar files. These are Java archive files that let you give your program to somebody else to use, and they don't have to have Eclipse or any IDE installed on their computer. We will also look at different ways of using images and how to locate images and other resources such as audio clips in a resource folder. This is something you have to do if you want to make a jar file that works. Okay, um, let me just... Typically when we do anything with images in Java, we will end up using buffered images instead of just the image class. There are three ways to load images in, possibly more than three, but these are the most common. You can use image.io.read, which you can see down here, and this will read in a file and save it as an image, but it will also save it, in, save it as a buffered image. We can use image icon, and this takes a file and reads it in as something called an icon. It's really good for anything to do with image icons, such as using J buttons or whatever, but you're not able to make a buffered image from it. You can make a normal image from it, though. The third way is to use something called Toolkit. Um, I find this syntax rather awkward, and I don't actually ever do it this way. Um, I think options one and two are probably the best way of doing it. If you really wanted to take an image from here or from here and put it into a buffered image, you'd have to create a buffered image that's empty and draw the old image into the buffered image. Let's have a look at how we do stuff with images. To draw an image on the screen, what we're doing is we're going to be using something called draw image. We'll just look at the code briefly here and then look at the complete program later. You can use draw image with four parameters to describe where you're putting the image. So this is the name of the image here, and we are putting it starting from the top left corner to take the full, take up the full width and height of the screen. Okay? This one here, we're going to take the image and draw the full-sized image, which is, this is the size of the image, at the location 380,50. Finally, we can actually scale the image. When you scale an image, you can also flip it as well, uh, vertically or horizontally. Here there are eight parameters for the position. The first four are where we're going to put the image. So we're going to put the image at location 70, 70 on the screen, and the width and height will be about 100 pixels. Sorry, exactly 100 pixels, which is about half of the original size of the image. Instead of using the whole image as the source, these are the four parameters that describe that. We're only going to use the left half of the image as the source. When we run this, it looks like this. So here is the original full-size image. Here's one which we made half of full-size, and we just used the um, left half of the image. Here's one, um, the original half-size, and then flipped upside down. Let me briefly go over the code. Uh, first of all, if you're using Eclipse, all of your pictures have to be inside your Java project. They don't go into any of these folders. This causes all sorts of problems if you try to make a jar file. However, that's where it wants them. So you just type in the file name of your um, image, and then you jump down here, and I have different methods for loading file names. The image.io.read is really the best one, and if the image does not exist, it will pop up a message um, and then probably crash the program. Let's try that. It 
So it says an image failed to load and it actually worked without crashing the program. The background image is just not there. The second way of doing this is loading an image icon. Um, in this case, if I type in an invalid file name, it's still going to run the program. It's just going to make a image of no size. Um, okay, that's basically it for this. And um, drawing the images on the screen is pretty much what I said before. When I'm doing the image, though, the first thing I want to do is make sure that the image is not null. Often, if it's null, that happens with this image io.read. So if it's null, it's going to cause an error, and I don't want to try and draw it on the screen if there's no image to draw. So that's why I have these if statements here. Image icons are really useful for buttons. Here's an example. So if we look at the code, it loads the image in exactly the same way as before. No, it doesn't. Sorry, it says, yes, new image icon. This is method two of the previous um, program. That was down here. Yes, using image icon. So we load in an image icon. And make a J frame, make a J panel. Here's the button that says OK. Here's a button that has an icon on it. This is the OK button. This is the icon on it and then I put a label next to it. This is a J button which has a picture and text. Okay. The icon is always the same size as the image. So this image is 128 by 128 and I can't make it bigger and I can't make it smaller. Whatever it is, that's how big my button is. So the size of my button is determined by the size of my image. Now there is a way to scale image icons and images, and that's what we're doing with this program. In this program, we have buttons. You might be able to see, if I click on it, it changes color faintly. So I have an array of buttons, and the first one has a red border, so it's really easy to see it change. There's my file name. And I go down here and I load my image, which does the image io.read, which is the normal way of loading an image. Then what do I do? Then I'm creating a scaled image. I'm scaling the image of the cat, which I should look at and see how big the cat picture is. I think this shows me the size. Okay, it's a pretty huge picture. I don't want it to be that big. Those cats are really adorable, kittens. So what I do is I'm scaling it to this size, the size of my card width and height. So I scale it there, and then I take the scaled image and put it into an image icon. Once it's an image icon, I can add it to my J buttons. Uh, the first button is red, the rest of the buttons are blue, and that's basically it. So that is how um, you can scale the size of images and then put them back into an image icon. Well, it feels like I'm going through this fairly quickly, but everything is um, in this video and you can pause it and you can go back and read over it again if you want to. In order to make a resource folder, what we have to do is go here and add a new, nope, sorry, we go down to build path and we say new source folder. So we're making a source folder and the source folder is one of the folders where Java looks in to find the stuff that you've done stuff that you're using for your program. We're calling it RES because this is standard abbreviation for resource. And then we're going to put our images in here. We could have subfolders inside here. We could have a subfolder for images. We could have a subfolder for sounds, etc., etc. 
For now, I'm just putting them right here. If we try and run the program now, it won't find it. Okay? The kittens cannot be found, and it just kills the program. And the underwater photo cannot be found, and it just draws nothing here. So, to get the resource stuff to work, we need a different way of loading the um, image. Sorry, what am I trying to say? We need to find the resource folder and get the image from that. And again, there are three different ways of doing this in Java. So let's have a look at them. If we move down to the ways of doing this, So there's two basic ways, and this first basic way has three sub-methods. This one is using something called a get class loader, and we can use a get class loader and load the resource as a stream. And this will not work with image icons, or we can do a get class loader and load it as a URL. If we come down here and read it as an input stream, we can use imageio.read, or we can use imageio.read with a URL. So we can use it with an input stream or a URL. Either one of these, they're doing exactly the same thing. If we want to load an image icon from the resource folder, we have to use the URL. We cannot use the image stream. We have to use image URL, and that will work too. So I could just comment out um, two of these, and the program should work. This is called image R1. Okay, so it works exactly the same, and the pictures are now in the resource folder right here. I will show you what image R2 does. Image R2 is a different way of doing it. Um, it seems to be working only with an image icon. I'm not sure what else it's doing. It does not use get class loader. It just uses get class. And it requires a slash at the beginning of the file name, which is the absolute path. So if I wanted to use the second method of doing it, I have to put a slash here. And again, it's still working. If I'm using the second method here and I don't put the slash, it can't find it and the program dies. Okay. So, that is a very fast way of looking at how images work and how the resource folder works. I think I'm going to upload this code and put it on uh, my GitHub account, and I will have a link in the comments of this video showing you how to get that. The final thing I want to do is show how to make a Java archive file. What we do is you click on File, Export, Java, Runnable Java File, and we always want to click on Package rather than Extract. Extract will normally work, but the package works better. Uh, what are we looking at? We're looking at Draw and Scale Image, and where is it going to go to? I'm going to put it on my desktop, which is right there, and call it fishy.jar. Before you make a Java archive, you actually have to run the program once to compile it. And I've run this program many times, so there's no problem with that. Okay, there's some warnings. We don't care about that. 
I'm going to exit this. and find fishy.jar and run it. Okay, so it's working exactly the same as before. There's really no problem with any of it. And you can give the file fishy.jar to anybody and they can run your program. And you can include images and you can include sounds in it and your program or game will work just fine. Thank you so much for your attention and have a lovely evening.